He's on Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Plum. Speaker, I rise for a point of personal privilege. The gentleman has the floor. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, as we approach the end of Black History Month, it's my honor to speak about one of our real uh, leaders in the civil rights movement in Virginia, that is Barbara Johns. Now, I know you heard that name around here recently as the governor just on yesterday uh, decided to name the uh, old Richmond Hotel, the, now the office of the Attorney General, the Barbara Johns Building. That honor is uh, indeed earned because of the role that she played in uh, black history in Virginia and, in fact, affected black history and civil rights throughout the country. See, Barbara attended public schools in Prince Edward County at a time when the Virginia Constitution, the Virginia Constitution said that Negro and Caucasian children couldn't attend the same school. And I think in this day and time when we think back about where we've come to realize that men and women assembled together in a constitutional convention would write into the Constitution a provision like that. And in spite of the Plessy versus Ferguson separate but equal, the schools for blacks and whites in Virginia were hardly equal. As a matter of fact, the white children in Prince Edward County had access to a new brick school, while the black children in Prince Edward County attended schools that were tar paper shanties. You had to wear your coat in the wintertime to stay warm. If you had too many kids, you'd have some of them go to class in a school bus. You didn't have a gymnasium, and the cafeteria sometimes was a place in which uh, classes were held. So they were hardly but equal. And that wasn't obvious just to uh, everyday people. It was obvious to the students. And a 16-year-old woman, young woman, decided to do something about it. And so what she did is she brought together all the students in the school, quite a unique way in which she did that, Mr. Speaker. One of the students called the principal, had the handkerchief over the phone so he wouldn't be recognized, to say, two of your students are downtown here. You need to come pick them up. So the principal left. 450 students assembled together, and Barbara Johns laid out the plan. The plan was essentially they were going to be on strike for two weeks to dramatize the, what was happening in the schools and how it needed to be addressed. The NAACP came interested in this, in this action. We couldn't, once it was uncovered, put the cover back on. Something had to be done. And so it was the case that when Oliver Hill and Spotswood Robinson, the legal team from the NAACP, became involved, a decision was made to enter a court suit. Now, when the students who were on the suit signed up, it turned out that Dorothy Davis's name was uh, the first on the list. And so the case that came uh, out of this was Davis versus County School Board of Prince Edward County. Dorothy Davis, like I say, got her name on the list first. But Barbara Johns and all the other students were part of that suit as well. And that case ultimately got consolidated with the Brown versus Board of Education lawsuit and went to the Supreme Court. And you know the history then of how the Supreme Court said, separate cannot be equal. And that started us on the road to uh, desegregating our schools. But the story goes further, and it doesn't end with 1954 and Brown versus Board of Education as though that had somehow solved the problem. In Virginia, it took 10 years and 40 lawsuits more to bring about the desegregation of Virginia schools. And Mr. Speaker, I think it's well and good when we look at black history, we need to look at what can we learn from this. And I would suggest to you now more than ever, we face situations where we realize that somebody has to stand up and somebody has to say things aren't right. We had a 16-year-old young woman do that for us in Virginia. That's why when you walk down towards the governor's mansion and you see the Civil Rights Memorial, that's Bar Barbara Johns there. It's her quote, it seemed like I was reaching for the moon, because at that time it was reaching for the moon to bring about change like this. And that's why it was so appropriate that Governor McAuliffe yesterday named the office of the Attorney General the Barbara Johns Building. So we need to be able to say to our young constituents when they visit us here at the Capitol, that's Barbara Johns. 
And you know why we celebrate her? Because she had the courage to stand up. And now more than ever, Mr. Speaker, we need people to have the courage to stand up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.